Fairfax Conservation Meeting will start at 7.05 um, with a quorum with Steve Goodman, Colleen, and myself. A statement of public hearing conducted by the Halifax Conservation Commission under the provisions of MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, the Wetlands Protection Act, and Chapter 164 of the Town of Halifax, Halifax Wetland Protection Bylaw on Tuesday, September 27, 2022 at 7, 10 p.m. in the Great Hall on the second floor of the Halifax Town Hall to consider a notice of intents and stormwater report including an erosion and sediment control plan submitted by Lawrence Silver of Silver Engineering Associates PC in Bridgewater, Mass. on behalf of applicant R&J LLC of Westport, Connecticut for a proposal to install a series of Percolation test pits at 0, 312, and 314 Plymouth Street in Halifax, Moss, Mass. Proposed work is within the 50 foot and 100 foot wetland buffer zone. The proposed test pits will be in areas of potential buildings to obtain necessary information about soils and underwater for site and building design. Shown on assessors map 63, parcel lot numbers 6, 6A, 6B, 6C, and 31. Copies of the filings are available at the Conservation Commission's office at the Halifax Town Hall per request by email or by calling 781-590-3872. Good evening. So should we all have a copy of the, um, of the plans? If not, we know. And I have it on the board here also. Okay. So those all, all together, I think? Just, it's easier to just look at his too. Yeah, I mean, this in detail. I don't want to it. it's easier to look. Okay. To see I do. Thank you. I prefer looking at this too because it's. Well, that's not ours. The one you're looking at. No, nope, I know this one. Yeah. This one. No, no, it's not. Well, it's not that one. Is it silver engineering plan? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, but then we were told that uh, the commission would prefer to have it as a notice of intent. And that's why we did it this way. Yes. Uh, uh, Rob Peck uh, is here with me this evening. Hi. Uh, How you uh, doing? The owner of the properties, and um, pretty much that's that's an overview. Most of these are down. Most of these, when they're in a test pit, uh, will be going down 10 feet. Very seldom do we go down more than 10 feet, mm -hmm. but it could go a little bit deeper than that. But most of them are in a 10 foot range. Uh, some may go as far as 20. Okay. But without asking for too much detail, what's the potential project? Because what's I know I'm not going to approve anything that's in that 50 foot. So do you really need to test that area? I'm not testing within the 50. I mean, yeah. even the 100 foot. We're probably not going to allow anything, if much, in that area. Uh, like you said, testing for foundation strength. So can we, is there a need to dig a 10 foot pit in that area and disturb that, that close to the wetland? Anytime you're digging that deep, you're, you're you know, digging into the water table. If you're digging 10 feet down in, within the 50 to 100, um, and like I said, we're probably going forward in the future, we're going to be very reluctant to approve any building in that area. So, is it really necessary to test that area for potential future foundations? So, it's you're probably not going to get approved. Because you're suggesting that the commission will not approve activity within a 100 foot buffer? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, what if, is there any idea what the potential future project may or may not be in that area? How big are we talking? Because, I mean, is it necessary to test that? Oh. Well, it is. It's necessary to test it. Can we core test? Can we, Can you always core test that when you get that close? Is it? Is it? Or do you have more benefit by doing a pit for your research? Is it? Um. I just figured it's less invasive and less disturbing to core it and put it back in. I mean, it is to dig a ten foot, a six foot by six foot by ten foot deep pit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, but uh, but we weren't doing anything within 50 feet of the wetland, and we were protecting the wetlands from that point. Okay. But if you're saying in the 50 to the 100, uh, that's it's, it's it's just a it's a it's not as delicate an area as the 50 foot, obviously, but it is it is still close to wetlands, and and I haven't I haven't looked. How new is that delineation? How recent is that delineation? I'm assuming it's pretty recent. Yeah, right? that'll say. I think it was 20. Well, the, the delineation is actually goes back to 2015, but then it was extended, oh, yeah, it was extended by yeah. the commission. Uh, it was extended yeah. by the commission after that in 2018. Yeah. You know okay. what I'm saying? So it, um, it's very recent. So, if what I guess if what you're asking is for the work that's within the 50 to the 100, can we do that with test borings yes. as opposed to doing test pits? Yes. That's keep the reason. test pit activity outside of the 100. If, is that that or does that really hinder the project? Yeah, uh, we'll have to, we can we can try to we'll work it that way. If that's what the condition is that you want to put on the testing, then that's the way we'll work it. But I would suggest to you that when we do come back with a project, it's more than likely going to be proposing work within the 50 to the 100. Uh, I mean that's to me. I mean uh, the 100 is really understanding yeah. the EPs 100 is just to tell you when you need to come before here. Not to say that you shouldn't be doing work right. within, uh, you know, that hundred foot buffer. But towns like uh, Halifax and others have adopted their own setbacks for no touch areas, and your no touch areas are 50. Right. So right. we're not proposing to do anything within that area. It's so, not that the hundred foot is to say it's just a buffer, and like you, it doesn't matter if you do any work in there. It's as if that work will directly impact the resource area. Which is the bordering vegetated wetlands or water, a water body? It's a large resource. So it depends area. on the activity, oh, yeah. and not the buffer zone. And it's known to have turtle crossings, and I'm betting there's endangered species out there if we look at the list. Um, and it's also within our protected water in the aquifer. It depends on the activity. Yeah. It, so. it does depend on the, on the future activity. So it, it is a lot for the board to think about. So what I'm suggesting is that in the 50 to the 100, uh, we would limit it to being test borings, which are really just augured borings and very little disturbance. Yeah. And yeah. then anything from the 100 out was what, the only place that we would do test pits themselves, open test pits. 
Yeah. I think that's more than reasonable. And we can do that as a special condition, correct, Debbie? Sorry, say that again? We can ask them in conditions to do the boring rather than the test. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, to do that right in the conditions itself. So. Perfect. Thank you for compromising yeah. with us. All right. You're welcome. Do you need to make a vote on that? You do need to make a vote on it. I can uh, make a motion to approve the notice of intent for 0312 314 Plymouth Street with that special condition. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Quick question. Before we go any further, which way is the water going to go? We have property right for butt and the water runs downhill and we've had issues with water. Where's your property butt? Uh, the algae is probably right there in the corner. You can come show me. Is right. it, it is property, the property side of this way. Yeah. Yeah. It, it runs right, right downhill, right down to us. Okay. This is not changing anything that's going no, on. It's, no, the water is going to run right downhill. But this is not the this is not a project. Oh. This is just testing. No, I know, but it's going to be a project, though. Eventually. Well, at that point, at that point, time when there's a project, there would be a notice of intent filed. At that point, describing exactly how everything is proposed to drain and so forth. And right. at that time, I'd, I'd like to see the results of any of your tests, as far as the because the, you're testing for <clears throat> the potential of its yep. ability to support a foundation. Absolutely. So I'd like to see those to see what the density. You know, all, uh, what what the makeup of that earth under there is to see how affected the runoff would be by any potential yeah. project. And, and uh, we're quite sensitive uh, to yeah. uh, Mrs. Alger, who's become a good friend of mine over the years, because <laughs> I think we've been to so many meetings together. Yeah. But um, we're very sensitive to making sure that what we do and how it drains and how it's taken care of is in um, is in harmony with what we had already talked about in the past. And what we had is an order of conditions at one time to be able to do the work on the back of the property. Because anytime you start changing, I mean, even if you plopped every, even if you put whatever you're planning on putting there on a slab, um, you're, you know, you're changing the water flow. Even if you don't dig down to the foundation, so, you know, this it would be great for us to be able to see all the results of all the tests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that wetlands was not wetlands. We found that at one time. The town the bank, and all the buildings around it created that wetland and the street drainage. That, that's what I mean, the town, the street drainage, that runs right into that <coughs> wetlands. <laughs> there's a drain right into yeah. it. That, I mean, that, there's not a whole lot that can be done about things like that, but I, you know, you do see that happen you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago. There wasn't a board like this stopping things from being built well, that way. And the codes right. were different. And the codes were very different in the 70s. The building codes don't allow for it now. And I don't think that was in there in the up, 70s. Up, up, no. 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 Because no. we've lived there for yeah. a long time. We found it. Yeah. We had corn in there. Right. And the drain went from Happy Gardens onto the street over into the field. Uh, it went into right by right where O'Reilly's is. Yeah. And then they continued it out. Well, it's heavy breaking. So into the field. Pushing water out there. But um, like I say, this is just the, the testing yeah. part of things. Yep. You know, we, we have full notice of intent. It'll come before you with all that detail. Okay. And I'll still need to go to planning, too. Yeah, I'll have to go before planning as well. Yes, planning and zoning. Um, so yeah. we'll we only be taking a close look at those things. Please. And if, I mean, you're in a butter, so um, yeah. you have a voice. I mean, we've got pictures of, you know, it runs right over us once that field fills up. Yeah. So but we do have a plan to alleviate it, which we went over with them before. Okay. It's just that they've waited a long time to get that work done. Okay. So we're hoping to be able to do that as part of this project to also get that work done. So, and we'll go over that when we come back with the project okay. itself. Okay. That'd be awesome if you guys could come between all the boards properly already with a compromise. It makes it a lot easier on the board members and the volunteers. If we don't compromise, she beats me up. So. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's good to hear. Yeah. yeah. So you're approved with the wells on the special condition with the boring and turning in 
Yeah, that'd be great. The, the research, research results. See, see what the research results are. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Good night. Good night. Good night. No. Is there a happy, yes. uh, happy gardens? No. Across the street? Happy, uh, dragon. happy dragon. Happy dragon. It happy was gardens. Hawaii. But no, Hawaii gardens. Uh, Remember? Was, no, there was a happy garden. No, there was Hawaii the gardens. It was in the corner. <laughs> I went into it. I just It became a happy drive. Oh, happy drive. Right, right, right. Is 720, is anyone here for 7 East Street? Hi, how you doing? Good. Debbie, please. <laughs> Is anyone else here for 70 Street? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else out in the hallway? No. Okay. East Street notices hereby given of public hearing conducted by the Halifax Conservation Commission under the provisions of MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, and Ch Chapter 164 of the Town of Halifax Wetland and Protection Bylaw on Tuesday, September 27, 2022, at 7:20 p.m. in the Great Hall on the second floor of the Halifax Town Hall to consider a notice of intent submitted by. 
Niall Zager P of Zenthen Consulting Engineers LLC in Lakeville, Mass. On behalf of applicant Ed Medeiros of Middleborough, Mass. For a proposed raise an existing home and to construct a new 30 by 50 single family home including a septic system upgrade located at 70th Street in Halifax, Mass. The proposed home construction is within the 100 feet of the bordering vegetated wetlands. The proposed driveway landscaping grading and existing home removal will be located within 200 feet of the Winnetusic River. The proposed limit of work will be up to the 100 feet to the Winnetusic River at its closest point, shown on Assessor's map. 126 parcel lot 2. Copies of the filing can be found in the Conservation Commission's office at the Halifax Town Hall. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. How's it going? It's going well. Uh, for the record, Niall Zega from Zenith Consulting Engineers. Um, so <clears throat> basically what we have here is we have an existing home located uh, here. Um, there is a wetland. Excuse me. <laughs> sorry. I, we can see it well, but can you tilt it just a little bit so it goes in? Of course I can. Sorry. I apologize. No, no, no. That's okay. Is that better? Uh, that's fine. I've got it right in front of me as well. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sorry. About that. <laughs> um, so, so let me let me kind of restart here. Uh, there is a wetland um, up in the front here. Um, you have the Winnetuxet River. If I pronounce that wrong, I apologize. It's off site. <laughs> Uh, and as well as a wetland located that runs along the uh, west side of the property as well. Um, and then we also have a flood zone, um, which is shown in the, wait a for a second here. Yeah, this blue kind of dark yeah, blue line point. here, it's elevation 28, which is based off of the flood maps. Basically that follows that contour and runs right along here. Um, there's no work proposed within that other than the access of the utilizing the existing gravel driveway. Um, so again, there's an existing home here. What my client wishes to do, um, he had a structural engineer go over there to look at the home and it just can't be saved. The, the foundation is just it's in disrepair. Um, the home is in disrepair. Um, so his proposal and what we suggested was right now it's really close up to the BVW. Um, so what we what we propose, what we are proposing, is a 30 by uh, 50 uh, raised ranch uh, pulled further away uh, from the riparian zone, out of the flood zone, uh, mostly out of the buffer zone, uh, which is located here. We are accessing the property from East Street from the existing driveway uh, and accessing it to the front here. Um, as part of this proposal as well is a septic upgrade. So currently it's an existing three bedroom home. And the Title V regulations you're allowed on the upgrade approval uh, to, in, to repair it in the same condition. Um, so what we're doing is proposing a new septic system in the rear here. Um, in doing so, we were able to get it completely outside of all the resource areas, um, which is obviously a good thing for the environment. Um, there's an existing well uh, located, which was located in the side of the home, uh, which we are prop uh, proposing to uh, keep. Uh, my client has currently just had it uh, tested and we're waiting for those results to come back. Um, these plans also, just to make it clear, these plans have been uh, submitted, reviewed, and approved by the Board of Health as well, uh, just, for, just so you, for your knowledge. Um, so the, the big thing here is that the majority of, there's no work being done within any uh, wooded areas. Everything's being done within like the existing grass field, um, the, I call it um, landscaped area. It was what was used as once the yard. Um, so again, we're pulling everything further away from those resource areas, which is obviously the intent. Um, and the only work that's within that riparian zone is the access of that gravel drive, which is in existence. We just have to extend it. Um, and then grading for the home as well as the septic system uh, and bringing in utilities as well. The water service from the well will need to be extended to the home. Um, we are proposing erosion control uh, silt sock along the complete limit of work in, within the uh, resource area and within the buffer zone. Um, what else? What else? 
Um, we have, I think that's, that's really about it. I mean, I, I know I'm kind of generalizing, and I know there's gonna be plenty of questions which I'm happy to answer, um, but that kind of gives a general overview of what we're looking to do. This isn't just a vacant piece of property with, without a home on it, it has a home on it. Um, so that's kind of the intent here, mm -hmm. is to rebuild it in a better place. Yeah, you said you were building a raised ranch, but on the, when she read it, it says a colonial. What are you building? Oh yeah, colonial. You said you were building a colonial on the plan, and you said a raised ranch. Okay, I, I'll have to take a look, but I'll have to double check that. But again, it doesn't it, it doesn't affect the limit of work, so. Yeah. Um, I, you know, honestly, you could change it to right. a colonial or a raised ranch. It's really, that's why it's a 30 by 50, because that works within either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. And for our purposes, and and the board of health purposes, it's the number of bedrooms that matter. Correct. Yeah. So does the house that's existing there set the grade to the number of bedrooms? That's a that's a three bedroom house. It's there. It's actually a four bedroom. There was actually I walked through it daily, but there was four bedrooms there. Yeah. yeah. There was four bedrooms there. What did the board of health approve you for for something? Uh, three bedrooms. Three. three bedrooms. Yeah. Okay. We we just didn't want to go more than three. Uh, yeah. My client doesn't build more than a three bedroom home, so that's what he was looking to build. Yeah. No, that's okay, but it answers their questions in the off with yeah. transparency and honesty. Of course. So he'll be building a three bedroom because that's the only subject they got approved for. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely correct. Yes. Do you have any idea the height of the house? I believe 35 feet is the max height allowed. Um, it will be less than that. Less than 35 yeah. feet. It says 40, yeah. It says 40 is the max. Okay. Well, it, it might be. I'm, I'm, every town is different. It's usually 35 to 40. So feet. the conservation only handles the environment and the wetlands. Mm -hmm. Some of the questions are going to have to be directed to the building department. Mm -hmm, sure. Our building inspector would have those answers, not us, and it's not our authority or wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. But we're more than happy to hear you all about the concerns of the wetlands and any other concerns in the environment or how water may impact you, stormwater management. It doesn't seem that. like you'd be taking down any vegetation really either. That's correct. So yeah. like that whole area there is right now is like like you said, what's considered landscape yard. That's correct. Is the yeah, tree the only thing on the wetland is the driveway. The tree lines. Yeah. The driveway yeah. That's the existing right. driveway, right. correct? That's correct. Right. So the that driveway is stands correct. as is. The driveway stays as is, gravel, it's not getting bigger. That's no new color. Right, you're not paving it or anything? No tile. That's correct. No, it's staying gravel. You're just getting just extended to the house. It looks like it's it, yeah. the same yeah. map. I got a picture of the shed there that he's taken down, right? Uh, yeah, there appears to be an existing shed to be raised at the corner of what's going to be the driveway. Uh, I apologize. Oh, uh, yes, that's correct. Okay, so the house is kind of aligned with the the back of that shed. The front of the building is aligned with the front of the back of that. All right, that's correct. Right there. Okay. Yes, yeah. sir. Oh, on the well. The well just a question right. on the well. I live right next door to Bob, who used to live there. Excuse me. We're, we're, we're about it. We're neighbors. Uh, I'm happy to have everyone speak, but can mm -hmm. you please announce yourselves with your sure. name and your address, just so sure. we have it sure. on for record, please? Sure. Michael Wright, 5 East Street. Thank you. Okay. Stan Galinsky. Um, one East Street. Thank you. You're welcome. So where the well is, that's right in the wetlands too. So. It's in the buffer zone. It's not in the wetlands. It's, it's actually right up against the side of the existing home. What if you have to put a new well in? Because I know that that's a shallow well. And Bob had tremendous trouble with that well. I can't believe it would be part of a water. It came out red and rusty all the time. So, there was, so if you have to put a new well, where does that go? It would honestly, it would probably go right around the same spot within that same area. And that would be the Board of Health would approve that. That's correct. And the Board of Health would trump CONCOM even if we had concerns. Mm -hmm. And being a wetlands, I mean, is there anything in place for the state to come in and take a look at this and say, you know, maybe that's a vernal pool or, you know, what are the concerns with the wetlands? It's a good question. So uh, when we file with the local conservation commission, mm -hmm. we also have to file with the state. Um, and we have to be, it, what happens is there's a fee that's paid, just like everything, fee yeah. paid to the local conservation commission, as well as the uh, DEP. Mm -hmm. And DEP has their chance to review it, mm -hmm. and they have to issue what's called a DEP file number. Mm -hmm. um, when they do that, they have a chance to comment. Mm -hmm. That's issued to uh, myself as the, uh, you know, the representative for the uh, owner, as well as the conservation commission. Mm -hmm. So it's doing two things. It's one, it's, it's, it's um, ensuring the commission that the fee was paid, um, and it's also, uh, if there's any comments that are made, they will make sure that uh, the commission is aware of them. Yeah. So, 
So yeah, so there, it, it, that's the means of checks and balance on that end of it. So somebody from the state's gonna come up and look at that before a permit is issued, is that what you're saying? Hmm? For 70 Street, did DEP have any comments or concerns? Um, the only concern would be the riverfront. I think some people are confusing the 100, I mean the 50 and the 100 as like a buffer zone. There is no buffer zone for a riverfront. It's right. considered a resource area. Yeah. Um, the 200 feet, just cut and dry. There's no buffer. So, um, it, we'd like to stay out of that. Absolutely. And he showed us that he was staying out of that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he's so, not even doing anything in the floodplain. But other than that, it's a very so. detailed application, which I appreciate. Yeah, <laughs> you've, done a, you've done a great job. Yeah. We just want to make sure everyone here understands okay. with of the correct. 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions on that? DEP was already contacted. They had mm -hmm. no concerns. He's not working within the 200 feet, no river. He won't be anywhere near there. He's not touching anything except the existing landscapes. Right, and the only access he's using is the existing access. Yep. That's and the driveway is not changing. It's all floodplain. Yeah. Uh, actually, if you look at the floodplain, it's, uh, it's, this, it's hard to it's see it here. It's um, this dark blue here. Yeah. So the river being down here, this is your floodplain right here. Mm -hmm. All his work is outside the floodplain, right? All right. The old right. house was built just outside of it. Right. So he's actually doing, I mean, I'm surprised this basement's not full of water, actually, yeah, every, does, every 20 does, or 30 years. He's going up. uphill by, uh, No, I'm, I'm, I'm you know agree with where they're building. I'm just yeah. watching this floodplain here. This, this area over here has got water in it a lot, and right. it goes away like a vernal pool. Yep. So there is no. There, so again, all our work is outside that flood zone. Um, the idea is that as long as we don't fill within the flood zone, um, we we cannot bring in whatever we say we do fill. Say I fill put a yard of a yard of fill in the flood zone. Whatever I fill, I have to compensate for somewhere else. Right. So I have to take it out somewhere else to make sure that I don't create any downstream flooding. And that's that's the intent of it. Um, so we are not doing any of that. We're not showing any flint filling in it. There's no need to. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is to keep that driveway exactly as is, mm -hmm. um, just as it's been for, I'm sure, oh, yeah. a long time. Right. And that's, so that's the idea. you had to well test it. Thank you. And you're waiting on those results. Yes, sir. Is there potential that they maybe want to cap that well? If it's if the water quality is no good, because that makes a difference as well. That well, is not good. Right, but that well right now. You talk about that area flooding a lot, that well right now is almost what you'd consider like a release valve. Yeah. Right. The water you're taking out of it is taking water out of the table. Well it's which in the is river. beneficial. It's a shallow well, it's about right. fifteen feet deep. Right. He's in the river. But if he decides that the water quality is no good and he wants to plug it, yeah. It may affect it. Yeah, oh I see. You know what I mean? Because yeah. right now, like I said, right now mm -hmm. he's taking water out of this table, keeping it from flooding. Yeah. By right. using that well, mm -hmm. it's actually benefiting the area around. But if they continue to use that well, sure. sure. I mean, would you like special conditions for the vote? Seeing how that. <laughs> but I mean, I can't imagine. A, 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 no, a I think they've impact on that you might have to come back to the front. They probably have to go before the board of health if they want. They're definitely gonna have to go before yeah. the board of health so if they want to drill that any up. deeper. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I mean, I would tell you that we'll be able to if we have to re-drill. It will be within the existing limit of work that we've proposed on the plan. Because um, we have to be able to, yeah. we won't go yeah. within the flood zone, we won't right. go within the riparian zone. Yeah, that we'll stay the outside the, the yeah. stop, I'll stay outside, obviously, the setback to the septic. Yeah. All the things are all those, you know, all, all that will come into consideration. Um, but, uh, you know, I, there will definitely not need to be um, any tree clearing or right. any additional filling or anything of that nature. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, like I said, the Board of Health will cover that if they have to do anything. Yeah, like that. Well, we'll so just put the condition on that. You continue to go back to the board of health at the top of board. Yeah, absolutely. And then absolutely. they made us, again, the board of health will tell you. Like, yeah. I don't have yep. a problem with it. No, I don't either. Everything else is. So, board is thorough. I, I, I can't remember, like, did you need to get a 
letter from the NHTSP or MISA? Nope. So because because it because it's within an existing landscape area, right. it's exempt under the. And I actually put a letter in the in the report on that. Okay. Uh, if you go to where the natural heritage map is, yep. um, there'll be a letter right behind that. Okay. Um, it details that exemption in their in their bylaw in uh, their regulation. So yes. So okay. any maintenance, repair, work within an existing landscape area. Mm -hmm. Um, degraded area um, is exempt under the It'll be a lot better for everybody and the environment and for the wildlife when you're done. Like, I yeah. really have no issue mm -hmm. with it. Because mm -hmm. you're taking that shed that's butting up against the the buffer zone and the house. Yeah. And, and getting rid of it. Moving yeah. them in further. It'll be maintained. And it's going up land as well. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the intent was to pull everything as far away as we could. Of course, they'll meet and set that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you guys have additional questions on this? No, I'm fine. It's, I mean, as long as you know everybody signed off on it, and it's what are the limits of all the permits? Obviously, yeah. it wouldn't happen. So, no, I think it's fine. Uh, so, I'll yeah. make a motion to approve uh, notice of intent for Seventh Street. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Yeah. Have a good night. And what standard conditions or any special conditions? Just under the condition that if they need to fill in the existing well and dig again that they continue to go in front of the board of health. health and and yeah. Okay. So it's contingent upon approval by board of health. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's it. They're not touching any trees around here. Right? No. No, no, trees. no vegetation just, removal. No vegetation removal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being awesome and answering yeah, those questions course, and being yeah. thorough. We appreciate it. Of course, no problem. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you for that. I know. I'm sorry. Is anyone here from 114 South Street? We oh, yeah. are. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. It's a request for their certificate of compliance. Which one was that? Is it the first brown one. Yep. Oh, yeah, this one. So that was the question I had for the DEP, and that was his response. We haven't been here yet, have we? No. Okay. Do you have all of the forms, the 8A forms and the written statements, or do you still just only have the as built on file? This is the question that has. So the, the as built is not, it's not required by the state, it's something that we require. So it's up to us to decide whether or not we want to see an asphalt plan, but we've got photos of the site that, um... Yeah, but the state saying photos don't suffice, and ConCom's supposed to go out for a second visit. We'll have a discussion on it after he's, but you don't have anything other than the asphalt. Right. Um, well, and, yeah, and the photos. And then the letter should be in the question as well. Right, or is it in this one? Uh, this this was one? just my stuff. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Mm -hmm. 
Professional engineer, landscape architect, and that's the way all that signed off on that. So, when we checked the notes, and all work was complete. We just received this. We just got that from Webby. Okay. Webby inspected the work. something uh, in our bylaws that compels us to go and do a site visit, or is that out of discretion? Construction. I knew the contractor and so oh, did my yeah. brothers, so we went in and did different stuff. Nice. We were glad to see it redone. It came out awesome. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. They were just, sorry. Oh, yeah. I don't know how they were. Yeah. They just didn't want to redo anything. It didn't matter. Yeah. I mean, it's all my parents had too. I don't like how they were on the side yard, though, since they put in the old septic field. Oh, yeah. My father was like that. He never did anything. It was yeah. the rivers all jammed up over there. Yeah, it fall they, they, crazy. they haven't handled it in the end, so it's just jammed on both sides of Glenwood, where it used to be. I saw they had signs like they got down there and opened up. Yeah, hopefully. That would be wise. Yeah. Yeah. People wouldn't flood out so much down there. Yeah, I know. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you too. Have a good one. Do, do, I, do we need any paperwork? Or we... um, I can let you know when it's ready. Okay, thank you. Yeah, are you Kevin? I'm Tom. Tom. Uh, you can contact Kevin. Okay, I'll, I'll email or call him when it's all ready. Okay, thank and, you. Uh, I try to get it done as quickly as possible because I know it's fine. Yes, we need anyone else. Have a good one. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Bye. Have a good one. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is anyone here for 35 White Island Road? So, 35 White Island, I think 
from here on, I think it's just COCs, right? Yes. So. I got, it seems like. Yeah. Both of these. Yeah. That won't get old. Yeah. Every, the no, newest thing I can find in is 2008. I actually yeah. have a list of wicked old the check. <laughs> but um, I'll come visit you next week. That's like in I our terms, you. the conservation terms. Is it wicked old? <laughs> <laughs> it's like carbon. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, 2000. So there's two things. One is the septic. That was 171273. I did get the certificate of compliance from Board of Health and okay. a letter from the engineer. So that's good to go. We can sign the COC for that. The other one was, I believe it was new construction. New win. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, what, which one did you say? I've got 171278 yeah, I can't. I'm gonna see this. Uh, I had all like these folders made with everything at Kathy's folder, and then it's like okay, it's now. <laughs> Since she's not here. All right. Oh, here we go. So the everything's underneath. I'd, like I know what's there. It's it's, it's okay. definitely. We just have to have you find one signature for this one because Colin was. I was in the other thirteen, so I can't. Mm, what do you mean? Colleen wasn't here on the 13th. Oh, um, yeah. So. Wait. She wasn't here for the vote, she can't sign. No, this is from, this is like from years and years ago. None of us were here. Oh, we're not signing on a vote. What is this? No. But we would, we, you do need to vote on it for COC. This is something that it's not even the same owners as like oh, I see. people for the septic, yeah. Okay. They sold and now the now the new owners, I think. Oh, so we're gonna approve it now. So yep. I'll yeah, make a motion has. to approve the certificate of compliance for thirty five Way Island Road. Yep. And I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so I can't like you said, I can't imagine. I can't imagine any construction down there. Like new construction. It's 35, right? Yeah, 35. It's not new. No, not new. Did they add a garage or a room or a. No. No, this is. Change the septic? It's adorable. This is 2008. Okay. It's adorable. No, there's some really nice small. I mean, the small. There's not a lot of room there, but there's some really nice houses there. I looked there before I bought my house. So I think the issue with this is that oh, it's right. Right. the owner oh, is the is the like is the is like a life contractor. He built it. You mean like renovated since? It no, was, in two thousand and eight. Like there, they, this should oh, have been done yeah. oh, years ago. Got it. And so since yeah, since it's closing, it's been, yeah. yeah, got it. It's cool. Yeah. And so it basically, we have a letter certifying that the, that it was completed in compliance, right? Yeah. Um, the a site visit already. would not really be sensible, considering right. that it's been many years. <laughs> and I assume. So I don't know what else we would need aside uh, from the letter stating that. I assume that? that the building department's already you know, signed off on it, and Jim's already taking. Care of what Jim needs to take care of and stuff. Oh, Jim wasn't here. This was like, this was 2008. We weren't here either. No. So Jim None of us were here. Off, we're, We're going back in time to that time machine. <laughs> oh, this We're just is saying. The one that was voted on 913. That's what I was looking at. Sorry. Yeah, that's 25A Street. 25A Street. Yep. I mean, that's 25A and then the one. Oh, 63 Palmer. So many. I've been in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? right? I know at this point. Yeah, I, I What are you going to do? Right. We have to move on.
to be reasonable. Anybody have a discussion on it? No. No. Who wants to make the motion? Which one on the road? <laughs> um, uh, 25 A Street? No, we I already, think we already, that's already, we already did the septic, so now yeah. this is 0171-0389-35 White Island. We just voted on that. We did the septic. We need now we need to do the home construction. construction. Oh, we have another. Home mm -hmm. construction. What else yeah. do you do on here? Okay. Yep. Oh, two. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All so right. It's a lot of info for you, Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right, so I will make the motion to approve the second certificate of compliance for 35 Wet Island Road. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There's that. sign the order conditions for 25A Street that we voted on on 913. Right. Yes. And we need to sign the determination of applicability for 63 Carmel Road. Oh, yes. Yep. So it's those two. And then yep. we need to discuss 31 Ocean Ave and 20 Home Street. And 114 South was perfect. So, did we get that? Yeah, there was two within the last one. Yep. Which one is that? The uh, 25A Street? Yes. Ocean Ave, if you're unfamiliar, um, this has been an ongoing issue with a Wetlands Violation Act, um, a couple of them for multiple months now, um, and there's been no compliance. That's yeah, there's the been no attendance. He hasn't come to any meetings we've asked him to come to to discuss it. Nothing. No, and I know the chair wanted fines to ongo for all violations. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Debbie, what's your updates? So, um, we were running out of tickets to write, so we had to wait for the printer. Um, in the meantime, I did review the proper steps to take for issuing citations for a wetlands violation. And I wanted to review these with the committee because if we do not properly adhere to those steps, then, Do you have printed copies for us right now so we can take care of business? I don't, but I can. Uh... I can get those to you. Uh... Okay, so give us. So basically, I'm concerned that we didn't follow the proper procedure. Okay, so tell us how to f tell us what you think we need to do so. We can... I think I need assistance with this because. Um, one that, that kind of leads into the next topic, which is like roles and responsibilities. So in the absence of an agent, um, the responsibility of the agent shouldn't fall under one person. It's not unusual for it to happen, but it's, it's definitely not common for there not to be an agent. Um, 
sometimes the chair will take up that responsibility. In this case, it's me. And you guys, sometimes you'll go out to do site visits. So I wanted to talk about more of an equal, try to get like assistance with things like this because honestly, it will take half of my day to just figure out how to properly get these out to him. And then there's no one to go, I'm a secretary. I can't drive out there and try to serve him. I can't sign the tickets. He doesn't answer the door anyways. You know, when right. I've gone to, right. to serve, he no doesn't answer. Knows. But someone's and, got to sign. It's like, it's and just it, that like it has secretary. To be someone from the board or mm -hmm. Jim who signs the tickets. Right, but Jim has his own building site visits to perform, yeah. which are a lot right now. Um, so I, I just need help with this. But I, it, like I looked at those at the regulations and I was overwhelmed like I don't have time to even it's something that you really need to study it's sort of like the chapter 91 waterways right. I sat down and I studied it and I learned that that's how we got to this point and he's clearly was in violation but okay but when, it, when we spoke to town council town council would have told us that we were doing something incorrectly because this, well, this is gone before town council and this has been ongoing since before I even joined the commission. Uh, it's yeah, it's mm -hmm. ongoing. Like it's lengthy. Um, right, but there's two different ways of enforcing it, and one is through the DEP, which we did, and that has a fine of up to twenty-five thousand dollars if you don't. So that's one one way to follow um, follow up on the violation, and then there's these, which are like you're a meter maid and you're writing out tickets daily <laughs> it's time consuming hey you can and that's eight dollars to send it to the resident every single day okay oh. do you know what i mean it's, right and so and he doesn't pick up his mail every day he picks it up weekly so they put it's just and then what about the days i'm not in i work monday tuesday wednesday mm -hmm. then when i come in the next monday i have all those days to follow it's that's very time consuming and is it is it going to be worth it if we go to court and then the judge says, did you do A, B, and C? And we're like, I don't know. Let alone the upfront cost of well, her, we've her got pay and then the $8 a day and then the gas to get over there and then. We just, I want to look at what is the most well, effective thing to do right, right now. Well, this is not the one, best use of my One time. of the biggest problems is, and I know because I've been in, involved, and for those that don't know is, the Halifax Conservation Department hasn't has a CONCOM agent, agent in almost 20 years, a good 17 at least. Mm -hmm. um, everybody plays a dual role. The Conservation Department's basically forgotten. Um, mm -hmm. Before our TA resigned and two of our selectmen and the town basically shut down, Marty was supposed to go with the selectmen and meet with wage and personnel so we could get the job posted because without that board's approval we can't post the dual okay. position of secretarial and agent to get okay. more hours to get what this right. office yeah. actually I just, needs. I just, so Deb needs us to step up again. Yeah, I mean I just wanted to and put it out there to you guys like this is... Th this this whole set of regulations for the way, how many pages are we talking about? You know, I looked at it online. And I was like, I have to come back to it. I mean, you see all those filings that I yeah that took research. I mean, that right. takes yeah. emails, it takes calls. It it's like these were old filings. Right. I, I work part time. Yes. So um, I honestly, I didn't even print them out. I'm like, I have to come back to this. Yes. No, you can email. Them and to I didn't us have to email the whole today. Too. So it's like I couldn't have done. There's well, be better, right? I know how to do them, so I'll take the packet home. Just tell me how to what date this out. But I wonder if there's like a more modern way. There has to be. Not like it just seems Halifax hasn't adopted it yet. They're still okay. working on other things before they get here. Um, and she seems weird to do like every day. And that'd be a selectman thing too. I'm not against upgrading and Deb. I'm really not. I love no, your no, ideas, no. but now we're at step B. Like it's like what it's, it's even more. Takes more work than a meter rate because a meter rate just goes boop, 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 yeah. and it prints out. She's done. This is like, dude, it's three parts. I know this. You I've looked at it online. Teams. Where is it online? Because I'm. Mean, it's um, the DEP, Mass DEP. And that's our obligations for enforcement. Yes. Okay. Um, and I will try to find it. It was very. 
detailed and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> okay. Because if we go before the magistrate, we have to have like exhibit A. This is the we, right. we do. That's why we have the photos and other things. That's, Which is, that's, that's what Bob was explaining to you when he yes. brought in his folder, Correct. and we've been doing it that way. Yeah. So, yeah. And I wonder if D, he'll still get the DEP fine of the 25K. I know. That's what I'm wondering too. Because our bylaws. I was going to say you have to because completely different. Those are two different sets of violations. Violating the local ordinances and he's violating the state. But the, deck is the, deck's but the concrete the has. He hasn't taken out the pavement and yeah. then um, and regraded it to original. Yeah. And they, I think the DEP gives you like 30 days to at least like respond. Like, what are you going right. to do? Right. You know. I mean, you have to be reasonable. So, have you reached out recently and asked them if they've had any updates from Mr. McKenna? The DEP, I have not. Why well, don't? Why don't we table this till we have a full board? I wouldn't even and know how to reach out to them. No, they don't. They don't actually work in the office anymore since COVID. Yeah. They're all remote, and and they won't. They they're like even their voicemails like, don't really bother. Email me, and then usually they get back to you within like forty eight hours. Someone in the Lakeville office has to have an email that can point us in the correct direction. I mean, you could, I could send it to the general, the general email, not like general DP. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, it's a stop, and then we can see where they might be, and then we'll just table it for two weeks. And yeah, I mean, I feel if like I don't. You guys don't yeah, mind till we have any Kathy here. Yeah, yeah, I, exactly. Like I said, I'm sure we're doing it the most efficient. And then but. that will give the board two weeks to read and study and learn. Yeah. The mm -hmm. obligations and make sure we're not too. Right, okay. doing something we're not supposed to be doing. But I, I have a feeling that he can be fine by both ordinances. Yeah. By the state well, I would think so too. Yeah, I would say it's 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 a violation of both. You know. Yeah, and then the board members can put a thing together for questions, and if we need to go to town council to get more specific answers, we need to go yeah. to town council. Yeah. yeah. I think that's always our best bet is run it run anything by town council just so that we don't get ourselves jammed up. Do you mean like the attorneys? The yeah. attorney? Yeah. Okay. So every time that we contact them, though, isn't that another? If we have to, we have to. It's better safe than sorry. And if we don't have the answers as volunteers, we need to go in front yeah. of town council. Right. But we're yeah. not going to have all the information for another two weeks either. At least, right. All the board okay. members, including Kathy and Ed, need to be given yes. the obligation first. Yeah. And, and if we have if we miss something, table, you know that we weren't doing then we'll start over <laughs> yes so. right i mean we've got the yeah. documentation of what was there to begin yeah. with and what he com you know what he reluctantly very slowly complied with and what he didn't um you know we've yeah. documented everything so far so and the first meeting where he told us he wasn't going to comply yeah i mean I, yeah i was trying to <laughs> i will take the tickets home and <laughs> ride out till whatever date because I, I know that Kathy wanted to continue the fines, and we've said she that did. it's a full board. Yep. So tonight we can vote to continue the fines because there's no compliance. And we can f make a second vote to table the discussion and the more votes for our next meeting in two weeks when we have a full board. I know that we haven't collected much or anything from him, but we haven't sent out fines totaling more than 25000 have we? No, but it's like... Almost eighteen thousand. I would say that we continue the fines up until twenty five thousand, and that way, um, stop at that point, and that way, until we find out if we can find past that point or not. Yeah, we should have all that information. Yeah. Two weeks too. I'll call the Lakeville office too. I can help you out with that. I forget who it is. I don't have my normal folder with me. I have all those when I first started making contact with there people. Be a database, you know? like there is somebody, day, you're right, it's the yeah, Lakeville office the and they're very office. responsive to email, nothing else. Yeah, uh -huh. there, there is someone working in the right. Lakeville someone, office. Yeah, you just have to. We'll figure out who it is, that's not yeah. difficult. Okay. Okay. All right, I need two motions. Uh, I don't know if I agree with continuing to find 
So mm -hmm. because I think that we talked about before trying to come to some kind of an agreement instead, which obviously is not showing up. But so that's we, the that. Do you want to do you want to motion that and I can vote appropriately until I, we have everyone. No, we can have I'd be willing to work with an individual that showed up, showed the <laughs> Conservation Commission respect, actually tried to comply and wasn't continually difficult <laughs> the entire time and was like, sorry, I don't care if I have a stop and disease, I'm going to continue building it. I don't care if I'm being fine, I'm going to continue to use it. I don't care, I'm now going to add electricity. I don't care, I'm not going to now going to add a roof. I don't care, I'm now on paving it. Um, I know. Well, so, I was yeah, glad um, to, that it was. One of his quotes was he literally said, I'll take it down when the season's over. Just oh. send me to find. Yeah. Oh. oh, no, he didn't say send me to find. Oh, I don't know. I Did thought he, he said, no, I don't know. Oh, right I, I don't care. I, I'm I, leaving it up till the season's over. I'm leaving it up till the season's over. And I, I think that was. With the state. And that was after and he his. Didn't realize how facts had stripped the bylaws. That was after his first notification that he would be getting fined if he didn't come. Yeah. He said, "I'm just going to leave it up till the season's over." Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Then he took it down when the season's over. Where was this? A few weeks. One ago. of the first meeting I was went to. Was it a meeting or an email? There was a meeting. It was an. He, he didn't come here. No, it was an email. First meeting after he was given his first. Yeah, there was an email. One of you read into the record at one of my first meetings. And then. I so, was uh, and right and next and to us, extremely mad. I was and we wasted, I think, about five yeah. weeks with his allegations about the police department telling him to put in the driveway and cave. Oh, I missed And we it. had to be with Chief Shin, make sure everything, you know what I mean, I just what we suspected. But I mean, we did everything we were supposed to. I missed that. I mean, if we are lucky to get anything back in fines, it will be all the time wasted in payroll. But not right. applying and coming in and working. Well, that's the, other, that's the other thing that has to be considered in a, in, a, in a town our size is do we try to combine with the state and figure out what to do instead of just spinning our wheels and wasting our money? I mean, you know, her time is money, writing the tickets is money, getting them certified is money, and we're not, like you said, we're not getting any of it back right now. Yeah, we're not getting it back right now, but we might, the municipality might be the enforcer of the DEP laws also, even though. I think the circuit rider, part of his role might be to help us enforce. So I'll reach out to him, like what do we do, what's okay. the next steps? Yeah, because that's really going to be what matters. So there's just more information that's needed. So do we have to vote now to continue funding, or that's should we already voted to continue funding already? So we have to vote on that again? Uh, we don't have to because it wasn't for a vote on the agenda tonight. Okay. It was just for a discussion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we can just leave it I as it is. I say because obviously I missed some of this information. <laughs> and when Ed and I went out, he was very cooperative, and I was under the impression he had Webby coming out to help him figure out the proper engineering and the right way to that's what really I thought we were bugs me is because if he had just done it all the right way I didn't get a good look at it well he's never been in front of us with everyone right. else enough so I might be right. saying it's been the wrong four months I'm not I don't want to say that name because I might be saying the wrong name but he told you guys when you did a site visit that what he's going to get an engineer to come and look I was there we were I was under the impression that he was trying to make it make it work you know whatever he had to do to modify it to make it work the right way he was supposed to do in the beginning to start yeah. which is what i thought but then obviously i've missed these things yeah the would he also have, yeah. zone? have to bring that in front of zoning hold on i'm fine would he also have to bring that in front of the zoning board what's that i mean no he went in front of the lake master chief chef it's the harbor master and the bylaws but chief shops likes to be called the lake master i see and he was in his rights of everything he just didn't file right. any paperwork or documents, pay any fees, you know, get any permits before he started and it was cut and continued to do so. Yeah. So we can make a motion to... I have a, I have a question for Debbie. Did he ever file anything with the town of Halifax? Oh, sure. No. So he hasn't even filed his application of permits with Concom yet, Conley. He's only filed with the state. Like, he hasn't even filed his applications with us yet. Well, his argument now will well, be Well, an application it down. for the state would it come doesn't, through it us. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so what do you mean through the state? 
The chapter 91? Yeah, he's done everything and got his DEP number, I know that. Really? But he hasn't followed up with anything else. How long is a DEP number good for? Because yeah, now he's not doing any work. No. But do you mean, so that's for a notice of intent, not a Chapter 91 license? So, on 31 Ocean, he was working with a gentleman in his emails. I believe it was Yeah. Working. So, and there's been no updates no. on if they turned in their National Heritage and other paperwork to DEP that they needed to be done, because um, they were waiting on that to mm -hmm. issue their final paperwork. And we have zero in for the town. Yeah, nothing, nothing. So he needs another letter reminding him that he still needs to put in his application and permits for the town. Ask them to come in again in two weeks because we're tabling it. And then we need an update from DEP. He's received a, a recent letter that was about probably three weeks ago, or it was before the last meeting that I wasn't here, which was what, the, the 13th. 13th. And he didn't appear. He but I case. just received the certified mail receipt after the meeting took place. He's not picking up his mail regularly. It doesn't go to the house. It goes to a P.O. box. And he picks it up probably once a week. So he's not getting this. I don't feel like it's my like role. It's not appropriate for me to reach out to him. No. You know, unless it's through a letter. But they're not getting to him in time. So... You may be you may be able to email them and um, put everybody on on the board just as an update because we can't break the open meeting law and all replies a quorum right. as board members just to but, have, just but, to ask them we need the DEP the just is, to remind you yeah you've already been sent formal notification by certified mail we still right. need this list of he things. He could always you. call. It doesn't matter if you got my letter a week late. He could be like, hey, right, he I just called. got it. So it's like, again, yeah. it's sending another letter, sending another letter certified. It's But we need the paper trail for court. Right. No matter how tedious it is, we need the paper trail for court. To say, okay, hi. Yeah. Hi and, again. You and the email is public record meeting. and it is, right. can be used right. in court. That was, so it's like, that's the best option as a board that we can give you right now is say, there's an update through email, it, it's time stamped, it has the date, it's public record, mm -hmm. it's still, and you're only looking for an update, you're not ordering anything new, it's a reminder slash, do you get an update that we missed? So do you think an email is better? We can email and then we can just send them whatever you put in the email, you can put in a letter. Yeah, and like this letter any, was sent to you, we yeah. sent it back, okay. Because we're only looking for updates and to give them reminders at this point because it's tabled for two weeks. And then maybe in two weeks we'll have more information on 31 Ocean Ave to, to be able to make a right, final we've been doing it properly or not. decision. Um, because really it hasn't been done by the town in a while. So I just think... I asked Tom Council what you have to do to put a lien on the house to get paid. Really? You definitely have to go to court for that. Yeah. But what are the procedures that need to be done? Right. Because that is, that would be, can be a vote. And at the point we've done into that, when the house sells, the town gets paid. Right. I mean, well, that's how you get your money back. Yeah. And it might take 20 years, but That's really a question fight, for if, town council. If you really fight and call that for a fact, you can get in front of the person and hold it. If the debt's big enough. Mm -hmm. So. So do we need an actual motion to table this, or it was just discussion so we can table ourselves? Yeah, we can just we can table it ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Can we just wait? Okay. Yeah. So what's the, uh, and then we, we need, need to pay our bills. So we, I can make a motion to pay bills. I'll second that motion. All in favor? All right. Aye. I see 101 one points of here. Is that a mistake listed here on that discussion? Be an agenda. No, it's good 
Thirty one Ocean Half Home Street and one oh one Mont Ponsa. One oh one Mont Ponsa. I don't know what it was. That was um Amanda. I don't even know where that is. Monty? Was requested to be put on as a discussion. Sorry, by Amy. She'll. I made a note. Sorry. Yeah, Amanda Monte, 101 Monte Ponza. That was um. I just was in the office asking Joanne for an update from um, Heritage. National. Yeah, National Heritage in Mesa. So that's how it ended up talking, but I was just letting Joanne know about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I okay. just was asking oh, for an right. update. I didn't and she wasn't here. Conservation side. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know if we want to discuss Home Street or uh, wait for a full board because I think also connected to Home Street, I'm going to look into our obligation for enforcement of the wetlands because um, that's some pretty serious violation. Did you give Debbie the maps that I showed you? I wanted to show oh. Pauline too. Sorry, I, uh, uh, they are, where did I put them? Right here. These two pieces. Right here. So, these are those two pieces. A site visit, not going to work for you, Debbie. Um, we did get your email. Um, in regards to 20 Home Street, there's violations there. Uh, but the violation is not actually 20 home street. Right. So here's 20. Yep. And then this is 20. This is oh, I see it. 20 here. Yep, yep. So this and question. This is 10 home street, and this is 151. About, and um, all in this area has been clear cut. Oh. And the exactly. 12 trees for 20 were I mean, approved. They were did everything cut. correctly for okay. their 12 okay. trees. Okay. Instance, so someone cutting there's the clear own. cut. Like, there's no <laughs> trees left <laughs> okay. on the three properties here. Yeah. Three lots. So it looks like there's so parts this of three lots. Fine, but between this 10 and this so one, these two. between these one. two, because it looks like where the driveway goes up, oh, okay. trees have been taken down oh, too. Yeah. So we need to research more. Um, and like Steve had said, we have an issue of someone accidentally cut down someone else's trees. Um, we went out. We went out. Kathy and I went out. Oh, you did. And, and there's photos on that. Okay. But you you'd need to take somebody to survey to say where Who's that easement is, is and whose tree belongs to who and who's the complainant? Do we have person? Which from which address? Amy Brown. Oh. And Mr. Glimsey. Oh, uh, yeah, Jeremy Gillespie. He uh, took some pictures from the lake on his kayak. You can see it's. Oh, you can, okay. You can see clear out the home. So, not like in front of it. Someone's going to yeah. pass the lake. Okay. Yeah. Essential yeah. and incredibly helpful. And, Joey, it's been a pleasure to work with you, too. Wow. Yes, sir. Uh, pleasure is all mine. It, it's bad. Year after year. Did they. The original, did they ask to cut my. Like, one or two trees to because they were remodeling the home 20 home street which isn't the same property was all probably done okay so whether it's were 151 plymouth or 10 homes is the question so we need okay. to send letters or is it both properties because just driving by it looks like it's both properties and it does. i don't see any surveillance sticks out there because flags, so. what looks yeah, so like it could side. be a and yeah, the little strip there that's yep. on the Plymouth Street out, right that could just be, like you said, access. Yeah. So it's hard to say who, there may not be any so trees cut on that. That may be the driver. And they cut it to both addresses to start, first of all. To get their attention? Yeah. Ask them to come in? First of all, yeah, yes. Ask a representative from both of those addresses yes. to come in? Yes, yes. So that we can at least. Because we need to figure out what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> so a rep from 151 Plymouth. And 10, and 10 homes. homes. Right. So what number of homes? 22? 10. No, 10, 10. homes. Oh, 10. And 151 Plymouth Street. In this property. Okay. What is this? That's the house that's right on the two. corner. That's number two. So I can get the info from the assessor for the... No, that's the house right on the corner. Oh, I see. This, it. Thing. this is 106. Oh, I got you. Yep, yep. 
Is the assessment printed print out there for like the mailing address and everything? For one of them. Okay. Oh. So 151 Plymouth Street um, is not printed. Okay, I have 10 homes. homes. Okay. 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 These just need to be reviewed. Planning board, select young memos and zoning. Do you want me to grab these? Yeah. Yeah, those are for you. Thanks. Cease and desist and come to the next meeting for both. Aye. Aye. It's been a long 